Hi, I'm Danny Lipford. And I'm Chelsea Lipford Wolf. Thanks for watching this episode of Today's Homeowner here on YouTube. And don't forget to leave us a like and a comment. And be sure to share with a friend, subscribe, and hit the bell icon so you get notified of new videos. Thanks and enjoy the show. This week on Today's Homeowner, we're helping you get your home ready for spring by making the most of maintenance. Don't tell my wife I said this. She was washing the patio and this kabloom happened. This week on Today's Homeowner, we're focusing on maintenance. We've been here for 27 years this month. Drew and Roseanne Plash are very active do-it-yourselfers who have more than a little experience in home ownership. We're both house people. We love uh, decorating and working in the yard and doing things at the house, so we're always finding new projects to do. Well, I think every room in the house has been painted five or six times since we moved here. We have renovated a bathroom upstairs and we added a full bath downstairs. We have updated the kitchen. And then originally the front door, we did change that and put a you know, much prettier front door in a few years ago. And we also covered the concrete slab out front. But what about the downside of owning a more mature home? There's a lot of maintenance. Um, there's always something that needs to be re redone, reworked. The maintenance part is not nearly as much fun as the cosmetic part. So sometimes we have to put that first. So we're here to help handle some of those not so fun chores that just need to be done. Yeah, Danny, here's one of the things I was talking about. Um, you can see how this crack has developed along the concrete blocks there. Yeah, it looks like a little bit of settling there, huh? Yeah, and you can see the sidewalk has dropped some. Oh, yeah, obviously a couple absolutely. inches down yeah, here. Absolutely. Huh. Um, so it's been a, a gradual ongoing thing. Uh, I think one thing that's contributed to it until just recently, uh, when I put a new roof on, I didn't have any guttering up on that upper level. Oh, a lot of water coming down from up there. And so it would just, you know, sheets would just pour down here. Yeah. Are you having any water problems inside? Yeah, we do have a, a slow seepage problem. Oh, uh, yeah. Especially after those days where it rains, you know, two or three days in a row, right, real right, heavy. Right. Makes a huge big yeah, mess. that's and, aggravating and not you know, really very healthy. Well, either, in my yeah. garage, just like most people's, it's full of more stuff than cars. <laughs> so, you know, it just makes a huge mess. Uh -huh. But I think, um, a big contributing factor to this settling and seepage problem is about 20 years ago, uh, my neighbor's Bronco rammed into the house. Walk, walk in, let me show you something out here. A Bronco? Yeah. About 20 years ago, my neighbor's Bronco rolled backwards uh, down the cul-de-sac opposite us here, oh. turned in that neighbor's yard, and then rolled backwards over here and took, came in between these two trees and then kept on rolling and took out that lower portion of the concrete block down there. Wow. <laughs> now, now no one was in the Nobody no was, was in, the in it. The, 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 when it came to rest, it was backwards into the house, it was locked, and it was in park. Really? So it was one of those freaky things. Fortunately, no one was hurt. The boom when it hit the house was yeah. huge. Don't tell my wife I said this, <laughs> but she was washing the patio, and this Kabloom happened, and my first thought was she had slipped on the patio, <laughs> and then I realized it was much too big a boom for that. <laughs> well, either way, that wouldn't have been good. That either. would not have been good. <laughs> you said you've been here about twenty-something years. Uh, did you install the vinyl siding? No, the vinyl point? siding had been done. Oh, I got you. Uh, shortly before we bought the house. Yeah, yeah, that's great to have. You know, they um, talk about it being maintenance-free. Not exactly maintenance-free. No, free, is it's it? not maintenance-free. It's low maintenance. Right. Um, one problem I have is this is a northern exposure. Right. Mm -hmm. And this time of year, uh, with the moisture and the coldness and everything, it really starts turning green and getting uh, dirty looking. Right. Mm -hmm. So it has to be washed usually at least once a year. I got you. And what about some of the other things around here? So many times when we talk to homeowners, they'll have just a just one thing that just aggravates them all the time that that maybe needs just a little adjustment. Do you have anything like that? I have a gate right, right over there. All right, let's that, take a look at it. 
Yeah, Danny, one problem I've got over here is this gate has sagged down. Oh boy, it sure has. You can see how much here and it won't even lock anymore. Oh yeah. Well, you know, those things are notorious for that. They're, they're heavy and also a lot of times the corner post will shift a little bit. So we can get a level and see if that shifted or the gate sagged. Most likely both of those things have happened, but I got a few tools that we can get started on here. And you can see a lot of the things that Drew's facing on the outside of his home are very common problems. And we're gonna guide him through the steps of getting it taken care of at his house and along the way, share some great tips for you on some of the things you may be facing. Hey, let's get started here. Some of my favorite simple solution ideas come from viewers like you, and here's one. When you're raking up leaves and dumping them into a trash can that has a bag in it, often the weight of the leaves will pull the bag into the can, especially if the leaves are wet. So here's the tip. This comes from Michaela Carey. Get a bicycle inner tube, this is an 18 inch tube, and use it like a giant rubber band to hold the bag to the can. Just stretch it over the bag like that, and then you can just rake up the leaves and dump them in. And what you'll find is if the inner tube is stretched nice and tight, it'll keep the bag from slipping in. This happens to be an 18-inch bicycle inner tube, and they come in sizes up to about 26-inch diameter, so I'm sure you can find one to fit your garbage can. This week we're helping Drew and Roseanne Plash make the most of maintenance on their 50-year-old home. The first chore is much needed power washing, so I'm getting set up for that. This new one wash system from Generac is ideal for DIYers like Drew because it has plenty of power for tough jobs like cleaning concrete, but it lets you dial the power back for other surfaces like this vinyl siding. Okay, Danny, I'm ready. All right, great. He <laughs> you have done a little power washing before. That's great. Goggles, hood, and, oh, and I love the boots. This is great. Yeah, shades of bile of battery. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> All right, here you go. All right. We got you there. I'll fire it up. We'll be ready to put some soap on. For the uninitiated, Bayou La Battery is the fishing village made famous in the film Forrest Gump. Since Drew comes from a fishing family, it all fits, even if the rain suit doesn't. Drew's starting from the bottom and working up to apply the cleaning solution. I'll handle the second story since Roseanne was very specific about the danger of letting Drew get near any roof. I won't let him get on the roof. No. I can't afford for him to get on the roof. <laughs> Once everything is coated with soap, we change tips and begin the cleaning, this time working from the top to the bottom to blast away the dirt and the mildew. Pretty short order, the house, fence, and sidewalk are clean so we can start on the next project. All right, Drew, let's take a look at this. I'll tell you, I looked at it earlier and uh, definitely we got plenty of rod in there. All uh, out in there, not too bad, but we still have to remove it. And then, of course, your threshold looking a little old here. So we'll be okay. able to replace some, um, all of that. But I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll go ahead and start removing this and see just what we have to get into. But uh, I saw Alan working on that fence over there and he has a shovel with your name on it. Oh, okay. So you might want to check in with him I over there. Will do. <laughs> hey, Drew. Hey, Alan. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, look at this. You see, let's get that plum and you see how far out that's that's a lot. Yeah, no wonder it's been sagging, so. Yeah, yeah. And I tell you, a lot of people will actually do a, a, a gate sag kit, and they work. I'm not knocking them. They work. It's not going to raise two inches on this, though. Yeah. I think we need to attack the problem, and it's this this post here. Push the post that See way. See if we can get the post back over. We'll, we'll try if we can push it that way, wedge some bricks down in there, pour some more concrete, and see if that'll help. All right. Okay. Sounds good. Meanwhile, the biggest challenge to removing the worn metal threshold is the paint caked over the rusty screws that hold it in place. But the rotten piece of wood beneath it is a little bigger challenge, so I have to cut it into pieces for removal. And once it's gone, it reveals a void that, well, we just didn't expect. Now at this point, a lot of people may panic because all of a sudden I'm finding pieces of wood. I'm finding water, of course, it probably came from the power washing. I'm finding all kinds of rot. It's uh, not as bad as you might think because, you know, I suspect that Alan's going to need a little concrete to fix the fence over there and we'll buy just a little bit extra and I'll be able to fill this in like it should have been done many, many years ago. So, no big deal. Okay, Drew. 
Um, here's what we got. Yeah. The post isn't just leaning completely. We've almost got a curve to it. So okay. the top has come in, but the bottom's bottom not. Hand. If we try to do anything down here, it's not going to help us. Mm -hmm. So here's what I'm thinking. Let's get a board. We're going to attach the two by here as a brace, pull it back okay. to where we need it. And then we'll come on the inside and put a new 4x4 four four post, plumb, completely plumb. We know it's right. Mm -hmm. And then we'll attach that existing one to, that. to the new one. Then we'll put the anti-sag gate kit on here as well, kind of double up. Uh huh. That was pull it back up. I, I think that'll be it. Sounds good to I, me. By the time we get the post level and remove some of the old concrete to allow room for the new post, it's getting late. Roseanne has returned home from work to check out our progress, and it's time to call it a day so we can start fresh in the morning. Once Alan gets the new post lined up, we're ready to mix concrete. And there you are. Hey, Thanks, sir. Give you a try at that. I think I'll go over and get that threshold ready to go. Right. Since I'll be pouring concrete along finished surfaces, I have a little more prep to do than Alan and Drew because they're simply dumping it in the hole around the two posts to hold them in place. Hey, Danny. How soupy do you like yours? Soupy? Not, soup. Not soupy, okay. <laughs> it's pretty soupy. You can get slotted spoon from the kitchen to dip it in. <laughs> All right. Let's let that set up. Okay, so I get to stand here for the next two hours? <laughs> two and a half tops. Two, okay. <laughs> I thought this was quick setting. <laughs> All right, Danny. Yeah, man, I'm ready. All right. All right, you, you left me enough? Uh, yeah, it's really more of a goulash than a soup, but it's there. <laughs> hey, you didn't do that trick on Drew like you always do about holding the fence post, did you? Yeah, he'll be there a while. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> he'll figure it out after a while. With just a few shovels of concrete, we can fill this void in no time. So Alan finally uh, told you you really didn't have to hold that yeah, post over there. after quite a while, though. <laughs> I won't listen to him again. He does that all the time. I, I'll tell you what, let's, uh, I'm pretty much through with this. I'm going to let it set up, and I'll put that wood seal in here. And then I, um, I pick this up, this new threshold. Oh, okay. So I'll be able to position it right under there. While I'm working on this, I thought you could attack this right here. Oh, okay. So if you take this and just go along, and you don't have to do a lot of chiseling, but just get that open, okay. and then anything that's loose at all, pull it out of there, and then we'll fill the whole thing in with a great caulking that I have that's made for this. So if you want to go ahead and take care of that, if you need the hammer to chip away at it a little bit, you can do that. Okay. And I'll go ahead and start working on that wood seal. Hot. You may think that a shovel is a shovel and that a rake is a rake, but not necessarily. Take a look at the new line that's rolled out by Ames. This is their Razorback line. And we've got a shovel, a rake, and we also have a tamp that they've added to their line. But I'm just going to kind of nutshell it for you. All of these tools have steel construction. They're heavy duty. They're professional grade. So you can use them out, in, out on the job or you can bring them home and use them in your own yard. What I like best about the shovel here is look at this extra long extended socket. So that's going to give you more leverage when you're um, trying to pry up anything and also look at this step here you've got a wider platform so that you can um, have more push when you're trying to break difficult soil this has also been reinforced as well and all of them have this padded handle which i really like and even the tamp this is the first time i've seen a tamp really with a padded handle this is all one piece construction so you know you're getting a durable product it's really strong like i said it's professional grade and it's going to bang out those outdoor projects in no time our adventure in home maintenance with Drew and Roseanne Plash is coming along pretty well. The cleaning is done, and Drew and Alan set a new post to prop up the sagging gate while I attack the rotten threshold at the front door. Then Drew started a repair on the cinder block foundation wall to solve a moisture problem in Drew's basement while we applied some waterproofing sealant to the inside of the basement walls. Back outside, the quickrete fast setting concrete we used on the threshold and fence is dried now so that an anti-sag kit can go on the gate to pull it back into square. Then the two posts need to be connected with lag bolts. What I would do is I need five holes symmetrically placed. Okay. 
I'll have a ruler later. Oh, 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 you're going to judge me, huh? Okay. No, just five. We're going to see how good I am. <laughs> While Drew does that, Alan and I are creating the new wood threshold by using the old one as our template. The fence is getting wrapped up, the threshold piece is ready, and now we're ready to complete the foundation wall. Boy, you got quite a bit out of there, didn't you? Yeah, it's a lot bigger hole than I was expecting. Man, that's the way to do it, clean that up. I'll go ahead and put this wood threshold in here. Okay, good. I got everything we need here, Drew. All right. All right, what we've got, I thought so. A little deeper than I anticipated. I have some backer rod. I don't know if you've used this before. Uh-uh, I haven't. It's just foam. The only reason we're doing this is because you don't want to fill that with just the, the mortar that goes in here. Uh-huh. Because it's be too thick, it will dry unevenly, it will crack, it will shrink too much. This gives it something to adhere to without using too much. Okay. While they fill that gap, I've managed to get the wood threshold in place, install the new metal threshold seal, caulk around it, and even annoy Alan in the process. We also use the mortar caulk to seal a gap between the sidewalk and foundation wall. Well, Drew, I'll tell you what, sealing up the crack here where the sidewalk meets the wall as well as the other crack has got to help keep all of that water out of your basement. And it was a whole lot easier than I ever thought it would have been. Yeah, it's not too bad as long as you clean it and, of course, the, the right type of a, a concrete repair caulk. Also, hopefully, the sealer inside will help yeah. kind of repel that water. Yeah, well, it's bound to have made an improvement. Yeah, absolutely. All of this. Now, now, the French drain that you did a few years ago is the right, uh, right idea to move that water that's ponding up right here, but I'll tell you, when you look at it from this angle, you can still see there's a lot of water coming down from that front yard that's going to pond against this house. Right. And so I'll tell you what, um, Alan's getting us some topsoil, and we'll be able to rake this back and put the soil right on the foundation wall here to discourage that from around. So I think you and I can uh, grab a rake and uh, kind of handle pulling this back a little bit. All right. That's a pretty direct hint about a rake, huh? <laughs> Once we have the mulch raked back and the load of dirt pulled closer to the house, it's time for the real work to begin. By tossing the soil against the wall along its length and then raking it out at an angle, we're creating a berm that will push water away from the house while it travels downhill toward the drive. Once we have the slope we want, we can pack it down with our feet to firm it up. And then Alan, if you want to go around right behind him uh -huh. and start sprinkling the pine straw that's already that we swept back, just kind of either with a rake or your hands to, or your foot or whatever, just to kind of kick it over here. Then we'll hose yeah. off the wall before we put any new pine straw on it. This water will also help compact our berm so that it stays put to protect Drew's basement. So Drew, I bet you didn't know that much water was sitting in here because it was a lot lower than you probably thought. Yeah, it was. I was surprised, but I'm, I can see where you're know, banking it up at an angle is going to really help it a lot. Yeah, and this pine straw will hold it hold it together too. You might have to add a little bit more after this uh, deteriorates a little bit, but yeah. uh, I believe you're gonna be in good shape. Oh, great. I appreciate it, Danny. Yeah, man. Now that we have Drew's problem solved, let's answer one of your questions. Janet asks, how can I stop my outside water faucet from leaking? If you have an outside faucet that just won't stop dripping, well, it's great drip irrigation for any trees or plants you may have around your house, but you'll end up spending a lot of money on your water bill. A lot of times it's very easy to fix by simply taking a pair of pliers and tightening that packing nut directly behind the handle. Many times that's all you need, but if not, you'll need to cut the water off at the street to turn all water off to the house, then back that same nut off and remove the handle and and the stem, you'll find a washer right on the end of that that's probably compressed or damaged in some way. Just simply remove the screw, take the washer off, and replace it. And when you buy that washer, maybe pick up a couple extra ones. They're very inexpensive, and you'll have a few spares if this kind of thing happens again. Then, 99% of the time, you'll be good. Shortly after we completed our maintenance projects at Drew and Roseanne's house, the area got hit by a rare late season snowfall. Thankfully, it was short-lived and had no ill effects on the repairs we made. It just gave the house a little different look for a few days. Well, I'll tell you what, I thought we were getting ahead of the spring, but then this happened. Really unusual, huh? Very for this area. We were able to find that little window of nice weather to be able to get 
a lot of the maintenance stuff done, you know, the pressure washing, the taking care of that rotten wood. Um, now you can have, you know, once the spring weather gets here, you can have an opportunity to do maybe some more fun things, right? Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. You know, I've got a lot of yard work that needs mm -hmm. to be done, uh, a lot of landscaping, and maybe put some stepping stones under the gate now that it's fixed. Mm -hmm. So. Great. Well, it's been great working with you guys, and I'm glad we were able to get a few things done while we had that good weather. And thanks for being with us this week. I hope you'll be with us next week right here on Today's Homeowner. I'm Danny Lipford. It, it's amazing that it won't go away here in the shade. Good job, Rev. Yeah. You hear people who play the spoons? I play the trowel. Thanks for watching this episode of Today's Homeowner. And don't forget to like, comment, and hit the bell icon so that you'll be notified of new videos. And be sure to click around and watch some more videos while you're here.